All right, John, how does one go about changing the IP address of, of a vSAN cluster, re-IPing, re so to speak? So this is something I've had to do. Um, you know, ideally in a perfect world, uh, you identify what uh, VLAN or broadcast domain you're going to put a vSAN cluster on for the vSAN VM kernel ports. Um, you're going to configure them, and then you're never going to touch them again until that cluster needs to be retired. Um, but, you know, there are different reasons uh, why people like to re-IP networks, um, different, you know, rules. Everything's got to move to IPv6, or maybe, you know, that we're trying to uh, conserve or harvest VLANs for future generations as a non-renewable re resource. So for that reason, you may need to re-IP a cluster. So what does this look like uh, with vSAN itself? So typically the, the process to follow is go check out KB76162. Uh, and the process of this is you create an additional VM kernel port that's on the new broadcast domain. So you go create a port group, attach it to that, tag that VLAN. Um, attach a new VM kernel port, tag it also for vSAN um, in this case. And then you would, once you go through, you basically remove the, the old VM kernel ports um, and, and clean that out in that config. And this KB outlines this process uh, for how you do this. It's not dissimilar from how you might use, uh, you know, manually do uh, failover of which path a port group uses if you're retiring a switch. Um, do note this is not really something you want to be in a long-term configuration for, and do be aware some features like HCI mesh do not support multiple VM kernel ports, um, so you may have some issues there. But um, this is this is a process that you can, so to speak, change the engine while the car is running, um, and this is something that's been documented in addition to the KBs and blogs and things like that. Miles Gray has a, a blog that he wrote many years ago uh, from a process that he was doing actually when he was you know a vSAN customer. So. Um, but do feel free, if you have any questions, reach out to support on any of these types of migrations or any of these processes. Yeah, I think that last bit there yeah, um, about reaching out to support just in case if you want to make sure that you're doing everything right it is a very prudent step in those cases because, you know, you are um, looking at to make an adjustment that impacts the communication of these hosts that make up your vSAN cluster. So, you know, it's conceivable that if you do things wrong, you could have some sort of a cluster partition or something of that nature. And, and uh, you know, you just want to be very diligent in, in, in those steps. So um, it sounds like that if, if uh, uh, you know, if our customers just follow the KB, then they'll be in really good shape.